has introduced Leslie. Um, as many of you know, Leslie is pretty much the founding board member of Smile on Seniors. She's the founding member of Smile on Seniors. From the very beginning, she was involved um, with our program offerings, guidance, and we're always grateful for that. And so Leslie is an occupational therapist and she is instrumental in thinking about seniors, making sure that they re keep their independence. As if any of you have read the email that I shared with today's title, you'll notice that falls are quite literally the last thing any person wants because it, from there it's typically a downhill in health. So one of the things that of course, with all of us wanting to stay out of hospitals, being healthy during the era of Corona is definitely maintaining our independence. So one of the things that helps us maintain our independence is maintaining our balance. If we don't fall, we don't end up in the hospital. So today's presentation is of course, very important in general, but especially during this Corona time where we really wanna remain independent. We wanna get outside, we wanna get our fresh air, we wanna take our walks. Mm -hmm. But we also want to make sure that we don't lose our balance. So I'm going to uh, introduce Leslie Levy, who can share some more information if she would like. Um, and I'm going to pass off the mic. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. As Rabbi, Rabbi Levy said, I am an occupational therapist, and I have been for the last 30 years, which I can't believe. Um, I started out in New York City and then somehow or another ended up here in Phoenix. And I specialize mostly in home health. So I go into people's homes and do assessments for safety, make recommendations for any changes that might need to be done around the house, and also do other some forms of um, occupational therapy in the forms of exercise and things like that. So that's what I do. And I'm so happy that you're going to join us. So I'm going to flip over to a PowerPoint now. And please bear with me because I haven't done anything like this before. I'm very hands-on, in-person kind of person. <laughs> so doing things on the computer is a little new for me. So bear with me. I'm going to do the best that I can. And here we go. So I'm going to pop up a, a PowerPoint now. And... I don't know if you, I'm going to see you, but you'll see me. And Rabbi Levy, if you can see people who have questions, just let me know, because I don't see anybody at the moment. Perfect. I'll make sure that if there's a question coming up, uh, I'll let them know. I'll let you okay. know. Okay. And please feel free to join in. I would like this to be very casual. Um, it's you know, I'm, I'm open, I welcome you to make comments, ask questions, chime in during this PowerPoint presentation, and please just feel really comfortable. And that'll make me feel really comfortable. So Leslie, the only thing you want to do now is go to that slideshows tab and do start from beginning. All righty. As soon as I find that slideshow tab, got, no, where is it? Center of the page. Center top, of the top row. Got it. Okay, from the beginning. Perfect. I'll take over the whole screen. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to begin this um, presentation with a short video that I think everybody is going to relate to. If you were at the presentation at the JCC about three years ago, you might have seen this video. It's the same one. And I want to show it again because it's very important. It, it really... Um, brings the issues home for everyone. If you've seen it before, it's, you'll probably glean something new from it, hopefully. And if not, I hope you enjoy. And here we go. I'm at that age now where things are starting to go. And I realized that my sense of balance had, had gone. I fell in my son's home. I fell down two steps. Lots of my friends have fallen and get hurt, you know. If you get careless, it's so easy to fall. I feel like I'm really getting older and I have to make up my mind that I can't do what I used to do. 
I find I'm getting helpless, and I don't like it. For older people today, the fear of falling is very real. After all, depending on your physical condition, a fall can have serious consequences for an older person. In the next few minutes, we're going to see how widespread the fear of falling really is among seniors. And we'll see how sometimes that fear can be just as dangerous as the thing we're afraid of. Finally, we'll look at how some seniors are coping with that fear to keep their mobility and independence. your balance if for no other reason because you're older you know our bones get thinner and more brittle and uh, they're easily broken and I think just laying up being with a, a broken hip with me I, I don't know I'd be afraid that it would be really, really be the end you just have to be conscious of the of things around you and not and not fall because if you fall you're a dead duck <laughs> fear of falling is very very prevalent and in fact it doesn't only occur in people who have fallen it occurs in people who've seen other people fall or people who have never fallen but know that their sense of balance is not quite what it used to be um, and it's a very important thing because it really decreases people's mobility thing for me if I fell would be that who's going to pick me up <laughs> my fear is when I'm in a crowd of people if I go to a symphony or a concert or something and the rush or the push of the people I'm afraid that they will knock me down ice do you know what I'm, I'm very leery of this ice you walk into a strange place the lighting is poor and uh, it's very easy to trip and fall. So you're apt to say, well, I'd rather stay in today. I'm not going out, you know. Okay. Uh, how many of you can relate to this video? I'm, I'm, I can't see any of you, but I'm sure that some of you are there shaking your heads and thinking, gosh, I feel the same way. And um, preventing falls is really all about just modifying your environment and being very aware of everything around you. It's not hard to prevent falls. I mean, accidents do happen, of course, but it isn't hard to prevent falls if you're very cognizant of the things around you and how you can make really practical changes to keep everything safe for you. So I'm gonna start with a couple of facts here. Uh, one out of four older adults, and when I say older adults, that means uh, people 65 or older, uh, one out of four older adults fall each year, and less than half of anybody who falls tells anybody. Nobody tells their doctor, nobody tells their friends, and sometimes not even your significant other. Falling is the biggest secret out there. Um, people don't like to tell anyone that they have fallen because of the fear of what could happen after that. You know, the, the family's going to hover in and start telling you that you can't live where you live anymore. You might have to use a walker. You need to see the doctor. Um, you can't take care of yourself. You can no longer be independent. All these terrifying thoughts come to you just, you know, tripping and falling. So, of course, we want to prevent them, especially 65 years and older. Among older adults, falls are the leading cause of both fatal and non-fatal injuries, and falling is the, the leading cause of death in older adults. So it is something to be very aware of and something to be frightened of. According to the Center for Disease Control, approximately 3 million people, older adults, are treated in the emergency departments for falls and 800,000 of those people are hospitalized. That's a lot of people falling. 95% result in hip fractures and 80% result in traumatic brain injuries. And traumatic brain injury is the most common injury from a fall because even though 
um, oh, I see. Okay. Even though, you know, when we fall, we reach out, we put our hands out, we break a wrist because we put our hands out, we break a shoulder, we, we break a hip, but we also clunk our heads. And that is not often seen as much as the other injuries are seen. As we learned about last week in um, the discussion about traumatic brain injuries, and everybody clunks their head. People, some people fall flat on their faces. So there's always an injury to the head and that's when you get the headaches, that's when you get the nausea or the bad uh, sleeping, inability to sleep. So there's a lot of things that result from falling. People 75 years and older are four to five times likely more, uh, more likely to fall than people 65 to 74. So as we age, the risks are higher. More than half of all fatal falls involve people who are over 75. And unfortunately, uh, women 85 years and older are the high, have the highest fall mortality, mortality rate. Approximately half of all falls occur at home. And that's the biggest thing. You know, everybody falls inside and um, where you think you're the most comfortable, where you think nothing will ever happen. And that's where everything does happen. 30 to 50% of all falls are due to environmental causes. So I go into so many people's homes and the big thing with everybody is no one likes to move anything. <laughs> no, one, no one likes to change anything. Um, that, that coffee table has been in that spot for the last 25 years and it's not moving or, you know, I, there's nothing wrong with that basket of magazines or, or that pile of clothing on the, you know, that I like to keep in the corner. People are very, you know, we're creatures of habit and people don't like to change anything in the environment, but, but that happens to be the key to staying safe and preventing falls. 80% of falls happen in the bathroom which is a terrible place to have a fall because in the bathroom, you have the hard floor, and, sorry, you have the hard floor and you have the tile. So if you fall in the bathroom, you are gonna hurt yourself. Um, so that's a very scary place to be. And according to the medical alert device people, one in three adults has trouble getting in and out of the bathtub. So these are things that happen naturally to us. I mean. So they're just things to be aware of and things to accept and things to prepare for. In Arizona, falls are the leading cause of injury related deaths among people 65 years and older, which I thought was a very interesting statistic. 54% of fatal, car, fatal falls occur at home and 9% of the falls occur in residential institutions. So it's very easy to fall when someone's around. It's very easy to fall in your house. People are falling in their group homes and in the, the senior living facilities. So more than falling outside, believe it or not, even though that one gentleman is terrified of ice, which anybody out there who's grown up around snow knows that fear. 18% of the fatal falls occur be, uh, among minority groups here in Arizona. The Native American residents have the highest fall mortality rate and 38% of fatal falls resulted from traumatic brain injury. So again, that clunk on the head is something to really watch out for. And if you do fall, and even though you broke your wrist or you broke your hip, be sure to mention to the doctor that you also hit your head because though you might not have a visible injury, there could be something going on in your head that you're not aware of and you'll have the symptoms a little bit later on. So don't forget about that traumatic brain injury being such a, a, a vital thing to report to the doctor if you have fallen. Currently, the medical costs of a fall, I think this is uh, within the country, is $31 billion. And 78% of that has, is paid by Medicare. It's predicted by the end of 2020 that that's gonna more than double to around $67 billion. So falls cost 
us a lot of money. Total cost of hospitalizations for unintentional falls go, is above $1.5 billion. And that's just the hospitalizations. So that doesn't include the other charges like the ambulance that came to pick you up, the doctor's visit before you went to the hospital, after you went to the hospital, your rehab stay, your long-term care stay. So it's just $1.5 billion on hospitalization alone. And some of those other charges that I just mentioned come out of pocket. And, uh, you know, that's, that could also add up to a lot of money. Falls with or without injury, as we know, carry a heavy impact on the quality of life. Anybody out there who has fallen or anybody who is afraid of falling knows how you're just going to go around about doing things differently. Things in your life are not going to be the same. People who fall develop that fear of falling. 50% of the people who fall limit or exclude social activities, uh, limit physical activities. People don't go out. People can be uh, more sedentary. People opt not to do things. And that is because people are just terrified of falling once you have fallen. And if you do become more sedentary and tend to avoid activities, likely the likelihood of becoming depressed, withdrawn, feeling isolated and helpless will occur because that's just a natural result of pulling back from the social things that you used to do. Would anybody like to share anything or have a comment or a question at this point? I'll give you, I'll give you kind of a, Call me. I'll give you a funny uh, situation. Uh, I a number okay. of years ago. Oh, yeah. Rabbi Levy, can you help me with that? Because I can't see anybody. Yeah, um, I'm going to stop your sharing and then you'll do it again soon. Oh, okay. Great. There you go. A few years ago, I was shopping at Walmart. Somebody spilled something on the floor where you couldn't see it. I mm. walked into it and I slipped. <gasps> of course, I, I came down like a ton of bricks. And um, I won't say I bounced up, but I pretty close bounced up. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, um, agile. pretty agile. And uh, however, about two days later, I had my annual physical with my doctor. And he says, what is that black and blue mark on your butt? Because uh -huh. my, my entire butt was black and blue. Oh my God, you really took a flop. Yeah, it was, it was, a, good, it was a good fall. And uh, yeah. so it was kind of a, it turned out to be a funny story not not uh, yeah, not one thank of goodness things. thank goodness but you know that brings up the point that with vision changes with as we get older a, a lot of the stores out there are very into shiny floors and those clean shiny floors are impossible to see things on so if there is a spill or something you're so likely to fall because you can't see the difference between the floor and the water or the difference between the floor and a crack so right. I can, I can, yeah, and I can also tell you, I hurt my back last week. I picked oh, something no. up heavy, and I, and I, I turned the wrong way, and I injured my back. And I can see what you're talking about. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm not so agile, and I'm really careful because I realize how easy it, just even getting out of a chair, I could fall. Mm -hmm. So it's not just walking. You're right. And, and, and all of a sudden, you're very careful about everything that you do, and you avoid doing more things than you would normally do. You know, yeah. jump up out of that chair like you used to because you're just, it's almost like you're gun shy of doing things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Rabbi, I don't know, can I talk? Huh? Can you say your name, whoever is? Oh, yeah, Arlene Myra. Um, hi, because I hi. can't find you. Okay. okay, I'm up at the top. Anyway, osteoporosis also plays a big part in this. A lot of us have osteoporosis. So oh, gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. Correct? And, correct. And, that, you know, and I think that's part of why the women above 85 are more at higher risk, because women, as we get older, get that osteoporosis 
more naturally, you know, with the loss of estrogen and our bones are more brittle. So it's really scary. Yeah. Uh, Leslie Nicole Grunberg wanted to ask a question or make a statement. Hello, Nicole. Hello. I fell in uh, Ju July. I was working and I fell and I broke my wrist and I am still, my wrist cannot, I cannot close my wrist. Yes. Ooh, I can see that. Yes. I cannot, I cannot close mm -hmm. it. And right. I don't do therapy anymore because mm -hmm. I can't. So I do it on my own, but mm -hmm. I feel a stiffness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then you should be stretching your fingers and your hand every day and doing whatever home exercise. And, uh, I fell, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry? What did you, you say? say? What did you say? Oh, I said you should stretch your hand and every day and do the home exercise program that the therapist gave you when you left therapy because... You know, if you don't, you lose it. Whatever you don't do, whatever you, little bit that you got back, if you don't keep working it, you will lose it. And it's easy to lose our function and it's a pain in the neck to get our function back. It doesn't come back as quickly as it goes, as we lose it. All right, any other questions or should Leslie continue? If you do have a question, just unmute your mic. We'll just give it a few seconds. All right, Leslie, I think you can go back to sharing your screen. Just share screen. Yep, and choose that, all those options. All right. Okay, so here we have a bunch of pictures of why we fall. We fall here because we have a cracked surface. We fall, as I said before, because there's clutter and maybe some too much furniture. I mean, sometimes you think, oh gosh, it's great to have all this stuff around. I can just furniture walk all around my house but you're gonna trip on the leg of a, of a piece of furniture or you're gonna bump into that coffee table or something. And um, it really is better to have clear pathways and clear spaces to walk through. And also people might be using a walker or a cane at this point here and there, and you need the clear space for those things too. We'll talk about a little bit more of these things that, um, as we go on. But also the nutrition is really important for preventing falls. You know, eating healthy and staying hydrated is another thing that I see such an issue with, especially with the people that I go into the facilities for. You have, no one wants to drink too much because then they'll have to ask somebody to help them go to the bathroom. Or no one wants to drink too much because then they'll just have to go to the bathroom and they don't even want to get up to do that. So eating and drinking, you know, and of course, nutrition wise, if you don't eat enough, you lose strength, you lose balance, you become weaker. So that's very important. Those things play a very big part in preventing falls. Vision, um, getting your eyes checked, making sure your glasses are clean, <laughs> making sure your prescriptions are up to date, very important. Perhaps you walk with an assisted device. You wanna be very careful. Now, you might have a cane or a walker. Um, a lot of times I see people with walkers get up and then they just leave the walker and go get something from the sink. Or the phone rings, so they move the walker out of their way so they could charge over to go answer the telephone. Um, and the idea is to actually use your assistive devices and make sure that they're close by. Falling at home also on, or slipping on loose throw rugs. I can't imagine how many of you haven't, how you haven't heard that a million times before to pick up throw rugs and get things like that out of the way. And then of course, taking uh, medication, the side effects to medications or taking multiple medications can uh, create a fall risk. Okay, I actually made a little video now that I would like to show you. Um, Leslie, before you hit play, I'm going to stop your sharing. You have to share that to optimize video. Share it. So okay. Share your screen again, but this time select only the PowerPoint and optimize it for video. Those two check boxes. PowerPoint, optimize, share. Okay. 
And now I go to that video. I think you already have PowerPoint open. You should have selected the other one. Sorry for all the tech support guys, but I want to make sure you can watch this video well. All right, guys, am I in the right place, Rabbi? Um, no, I'm share when you select PowerPoint, you had another thing open over there. There are a number of selectable programs. Okay, share the screen. Select the one that looks like it's in the middle of the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Ah, sorry guys, as I said, I'm a little more hands-on. Okay, are we, are we in the right place now, Rabbi? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Leslie Levy, occupational therapist. Today, I'm going to show you how falls mainly occur in the house and how to prevent them. Most kitchen falls happen because of wet or sticky floors, including uneven cracks in the floor, unanchored throw rugs or mats, and flimsy footwear. Mop up spills as soon as you can. If bending is a problem, try using something like a lightweight Swiffer for easy cleaning. You can also keep a non-slip mat in front of the sink to catch drips. Stove top and countertop cooking is much safer than using the oven. The idea is to eliminate unnecessary bending, lifting, and carrying. If you get dizzy or are unsteady on your feet, or you get tired quickly, sit on a sturdy chair or stool instead of standing when preparing meals. Arrange cabinets so that your everyday items are easy to reach. Never step up on chairs to reach things. Use a reacher to grab for lighter weight items and ask for help whenever possible. Whatever you do, don't take chances. Lastly, wear shoes with good support to prevent slipping on hard floors. Now let's move into the living room. Lighting is very important. Make sure your lamps and fixtures are all in good working order. Exposed wires are always a fall risk. Don't run your phone charger or any other cords in your walking path. Keep the phone and remote control easy to reach so you don't have to get up unnecessarily. Try to limit your clutter. In this case, less is more. As you can see, the room is open with a wide pathway and no throw rugs to slip over. In most homes or apartments, there's a hallway that leads to the bedrooms and the bathrooms. These rugs are here to show you how dangerous a loose rug can be. Here we see shoes getting stuck under the edge. And over here is an example of the walker catching on the edge. If you have a decorative rug that you can't part with, stick it down with double face tape so you don't slip over it. This bathroom has a combined tub and shower. Placing a non-stiff mat inside and outside of the shower or tub can help prevent a fall. Install grab bars in and around the tub. Inside the tub, a bar goes on the back wall to hold when sitting and standing in the tub and for balance while washing. One bar goes vertically on the side wall to hold on to when stepping in and out. Never grab the towel wrap. Towel wraps are not anchored into the studs and will fall off the wall if you give them your full body weight. You can always put a grab bar in place of a towel rack if that's a spot you always reach for. You can purchase a removable grab bar. They're sold in most pharmacies, medical supply stores, or online. It works like a vise that you put on the tub wall. It's easy to install and very secure. Use a handheld shower for easy reaching. Make sure the soap and shampoo are within reach to prevent unnecessary stepping, bending, or reaching. For individuals with impaired balance or fatigue issues, a shower chair is a solution to standing too long and taking breaks. Toilets can be modified with a raised toilet seat. Here's a toilet seat that is also available at local pharmacies, medical supply stores, or online. 
It has a tightening mechanism that makes it very sturdy. Some come with handles. I only put one handle on this toilet seat because the sink vanity is close enough to push off of. Here at the sink, as I mentioned in the kitchen, you might also place a little seat for when you're grooming and brushing your teeth, just in case you get dizzy, lose your balance, or fatigued. And put night lights or motion lights in the bathroom and along the paths from room to room. Now let's take a look at a different bathroom. Here's a bathroom with a walk-in shower. The vertical grab bar is on the side wall and the horizontal grab bar is on the back wall. Once again, you would use non-slip mats inside and out of the shower. The shower chair is placed inside for those who need to sit due to dizziness, poor balance, or fatigue. In contrast to the first bathroom, here's a different kind of grab bar for the toilet. These are also available in pharmacies, medical supply stores, or online. They screw right back into the back of the toilet seat. You can adjust the width and height to your needs, and you can use one or both. And finally, this brings us to the bedroom. Again, lighting is so important. The room should be well lit and night lights should be strategically placed, especially in the path to the bedroom. Always have a lamp and telephone within easy reach of your bed. Sleep on the side of the bed that's easiest for you to get in and out of. Here we have what's called a bed cane or bed loop. It too is available at most pharmacies, medical supply stores, or online. It anchors between the bed and the box spring. It's a support handle used for leverage and stability when getting in and out of bed. Just as I pointed out about the kitchen cabinets, it's smart to arrange everyday items in your closet so they're easy to reach. Use a reacher for things that are high up. And of course, always ask for assistance before taking any chances. In summary, so as you can see, these were just a few recommendations on how to prevent falls in the home. It's all about modifying your environment. With a little creativity, the options are endless. I hope you found this helpful and thank you for joining me. Okay, do we have any thoughts, questions, or comments? First of all, thank you, Leslie. Was that the last slide? Yeah, that was the last. Uh, well, that was the last slide for, no, not for the presentation. Uh, okay. Any questions? I got a comment. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, Barbara made that comment. She said, make sure you make that comment. Uh, <laughs> we inherited one of those grabbers from Barbara's aunt, and Barbara's comment was, that's, that's something that's absolutely essential. We Any that. anybody that's over seventy years old should have one, even if they're in good physical condition. Lauren, are you talking about the one that vice that that grab bar, the one that goes on? To no, the grab the grabber where you can reach things that are high up. Oh, the reacher. Oh, yes, those are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. they are. For some reason, Barbara doesn't like me standing on a chair. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, the comment about the Native Americans having such a high mortality rate, has there been any kind of determination as to why that is? It didn't say in the literature, it just stated the fact. So I don't know. That's, that's, that's unusual. I, I'm surprised to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess being here in Arizona, that would be something that would be highlighted because we do have so many Native Americans that live here, but they didn't say why. Yeah, I, and I will agree with you on the 80% of accidents are in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. the, the only accident I ever had, I was single at the time, was getting out of the shower. Mm -hmm. And I fell and hit my chin on the sink. <gasps> Didn't oh, you? Oh. Huh? Yes, Leslie, it's Orly. Barbara Leslie. doesn't want me to tell the whole story. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But it was, <laughs> uh, it, it, it goes to show you, when you got wet feet and wet tile. Yes. and. It those are hard surfaces. Yeah. Arlene, did you want to say something? Well, before that, I see Stephanie Schink um, unmuted. Stephanie, did you have a question? 
Um, I've not got a question. I just think uh, whatever Leslie said is very correct. I have no mats in my house. Um, and so I avoid the slipping part. But, you know, I've been known to fall in uh, like slow-mo. It's just like, oh, I'm going to fall. So I just go very gently down because I just give into it. Mm. Um, and oh, Stephanie, it's so nice to hear your voice. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. Uh, and and it's a good point about going down slowly. Arlene, we'll take your question in just a it's moment. My question. I was going to answer um, this question. It's a, oh, you have an answer. Okay. And about the Native Americans, I volunteer with the Native Americans. Oh, okay. The problem is they don't have running water all the time. Okay, so they have to go to sources where they have to go out, and they have to. That's why they're having a problem now. They don't have bathrooms in, internally or in the house and they have to go outside. They want to live the way they were brought up to live with their tribes within the four mountains. And that's why there's such a problem now. Mm. Because they don't want to change. I mean, I've been volunteering with them for 15 years, so. Oh, gosh, thank you for yeah, sharing that be, and be, shedding be, some light on that on the question. Um, and then also getting back to Stephanie's uh, comment, if you are going to fall or you sense that you're falling, go down slowly with the fall. And that's really the safest way to do it. And if you have the opportunity to have some physical therapy or occupational therapy, they can show you exactly how to fall and how to get up, which really does help. Yes, the getting, the getting up is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I fell and, uh, you know, for no reason at all, I was standing one second and the next split second I was on my backside and, 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 that's I all put it my, takes. and I put my hand down to save myself, but in, in the course of that, I broke my wrist. Yeah, so the it, challenge, the challenge is to get up and I was... I fell on on, on uh, uh, the, the concrete, uh, you know, in the backyard mm. because I was oh. I was in the process of taking my garbage cans out. So my challenge was because I've got high RV gates and nobody could see me or probably even less hear me. Um, I just sat there for I would say a good three minutes to compose myself and done, did some deep breathing uh, and gathered my strength because I realized my left side would be useless and I would depend on my right side. So, and I'm left-handed, so my left hand is, is, was useless and I had to put all my weight on my right side in order to push myself um, into a side sitting position and then slowly managed to get into a squat. Mm -hmm. and, from the, and from the squat, I was able to raise myself very, very slowly. So I think um, having done some yoga, that helped me the, with the breathing and not to panic. I think panic is, is also um, not a good thing. Yeah, um, I have a nice handout that somehow or another I can get to you guys on how to get up from a fall. It's a picture handout and it, it talks about doing exactly what you're saying, you know, getting on all fours and hoisting yourself up on some piece of furniture or something that's stable. It talks, you know, it shows you that you have to crawl or scoot or use any of those physical resources that you have left after you have composed yourself um, to get yourself to a place where you can maybe pull yourself up. And again, I hear so many stories in the bathroom, like Lauren was saying, those falls always occur in the bathroom about people who live alone and they spent two days in their bathtub waiting for somebody to come and get them because they live by themselves and not everybody calls you every day. Um, so, you know, there are some horror stories about falling out there. And then, so I'm just going to throw in that life alert or take your cell phone with you every time you go to the bathroom, even if it's just to get a sip of water or pick something out of your tooth, whatever it is, the littlest thing, take your life alert or your cell phone with you all the time, wherever you go. Um, I see two chats. Do I get those? 
No, um, I don't see any questions in chat. So they're probably to you directly. So yes, look at oh, those. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pinky. <laughs> um, okay. So let, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. So let's continue on with a few more slides and uh, we'll go from there. I'm not sure how to get rid of this chat thing. Hit the uh, little arrow on the top left of it. You'll be able to close it. Top left, close. Okie dokie, thank you. Okay, so now I go back to share screen. Yep. And am I there? No, you, you shared your wrong PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Share your screen again, and this time select the correct um, larger PowerPoint. Unless you close it. Just PowerPoint, now. okay. Yeah, just start it again. On, you'll have to get it from your, pro, from your files. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Of course, I can't find it now because I'm panicking. It, it. Okay, now, now I share it. Um, well, first get to the, you're already sharing. Don't worry about it. Just get to the oh. slide you want to go to. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so why do people fall? Okay. Uh, normal aging, like we talked, like was talked about in the video. Um, everybody, as we age, we decline. So we lose vision, we lose hearing, we go to the bathroom more because our bladders aren't as strong, we have prostate issues. These are just very natural things that happen to all of us as we age and we need to be aware of these things and, and prepare for them. Don't get caught by surprise by any of this stuff happening. It's, it's something that we should all kind of not be in denial, take, pull our heads out of the sand and, be, and prepare for these things. Another reason why people fall is the environment. And that's the biggest reason really why people fall. It's everything around us. So the phone rings. So we jump up too fast or we can't jump up <laughs> or we can't jump up fast enough. Um, the floor is slippery. The lighting is poor. Like I showed you in the video that I made, make sure all your lights work. Make sure the lights are on. I work with a lot of people that when we go from room to room, people like to turn those automatic lights that go on or just leave a small lamp on so that you can see where you're going all the time. Wearing adequate footwear is also very important. Unfortunately, sexy shoes are out as we get older. Flip flops are out as we get older. Shoes with support are the best things to wear, even around the house when you feel like you just wanna wear slippers and something easy. Find a slipper that wraps around your whole foot and it's not floppy. Throw rugs, as, we also, as was also mentioned in the video, terrible. I mean, if they're not anchored down really tight to the floor, the chance of slipping or it slipping out from under you is tremendous. And it's really um, a disaster waiting to happen. And une uneven surfaces, sometimes there's cracks, sometimes there's a little bump between rooms. Always be aware of all these things. Another reason why we fall is lack of activity, just becoming more sedentary. Um, I know that with some people now watching TV, especially has become, we're all binge watching like crazy because we're not going anywhere get up every half an hour and take a little lap around the house. Don't be so sedentary. Um, and of course, the fear of doing things is, for, is why people fall and a loss of coordination and strength. The poor diet, like we talked about, make sure that you're drinking enough water. And if you are home, it's okay if you have to go to the bathroom. 
So you go, you know, you, and um, it's scary to get up, but if your environment is safe and you're using your adaptive equipment the way you should, then you'll be able to go to the bathroom. And I know it sounds silly, but sometimes even just putting yourself on an, what, like, like when we were kids, like a bathroom program, if you are somebody that has bladder issues, go to the bathroom every half an hour or 45 minutes. Don't wait till you have to go because then that's what causes the urgency and the fear and the rushing around. And again, poor, uh, the nourishment is also very important. Medications, if you, if you take four or more medications, you're considered a risk for falls. And medications, everybody's taking more of them as we get older. And one of the couple of things that's most, well, one of the things that's most important is to actually take the medication as it's prescribed. Uh, if you're not feeling aches and pains and your arthritis is not bothering you, it's because you're taking the medication. So don't say to yourself, oh, I feel okay today, so I don't think I'll take it. Or I don't have a headache this morning, but you know you get headaches. So, you know, if you don't have a headache in the morning, you decide not to take something, but you want to take the medication to get ahead of the pain and to allow yourself the ease of function. And don't wait for something to hurt before you take the medications. Or if you have high blood pressure or you're diabetic, Whatever, if you're on some kind of a maintenance medication, take it as prescribed. If you're confused about your medications, you could make an appointment with your pharmacist and actually bring your meds in and show him or her what you're taking. Because chances are the cardiologist doesn't know what the orthopedist gave you and the dentist doesn't know that, the, that you're on to something either. So a lot of times, if we're seeing different doctors, they don't always communicate with each other. They don't always know what meds uh, you might be taking. So a pharmacist can really help you kind of wean out the meds or explain to you how they interact with each other. Low vision is another reason why people fall. As we age, we get macular degeneration, cataracts, glaucoma, um, decreases in visual perception. So those are things to, to get ahead of. Oh, I'm so sorry. What do you know? Easy or easy. Those are things to get ahead of. Camera. Sorry, excuse me. Hey, I have to get the water bottle. Shh. Easy, boy. Easy. Okay. Um, Leslie's going to have sorry. to talk about how animals play a role in people. Yes. Training. Animals, gosh, and I've got four dogs and a cat, and I do. When I let the door open, <laughs> my husband's coming running to get the dog. <laughs> He's quiet now. Um, when I come home, they are going crazy and jumping all over, and often I have fallen or tripped over one of my dogs. So they are um, something to be aware of and be careful if you do have dogs or cats or whoever. And I'm sure you saw some of them in the video. Uh, inner ear problems. As we age, we also get the vertigo and dizziness. Those are natural parts of aging. Um, so those can be reasons why we fall and furniture walk, especially because you don't catch your balance as quickly as you used to. And then neurological conditions. Uh, sometimes you're having an onset of a disease, or you already do have one or a syndrome like Parkinson's disease or diabetes. You could, people who are diabetic have neuropathy in their fingertips and feet, and those you know, can create balance problems, multiple sclerosis. You know, there are different reasons out there for why people fall. And preventing falls. As we come to a conclusion of this discussion, preventing falls, tell your doctor if you're falling. He's not gonna, he or she isn't supposed to tell anybody. So you can tell your, at least tell your doctor and if, assess what's going on and why you're falling and get to the bottom of it. Because if you avoid it, that's when the family hovers in. That's when people think you can no longer take care of yourself. That's when people tell you what they think you should be doing instead of what you think you should be doing. Take control, rationally pre prepare for some of the declines in functions that you might be having, 
and show the people around you that you are independent and you are caring for yourself and you're doing what you need to be doing. Get your eyes checked, talk to your pharmacist, assess your home. I also have a very nice uh, home safety checklist that somehow we can email out to you with the uh, other handout on how to get up from the floor. Assessing your home, go just walk around, look at things and make sure that everything is where it should be, everything has a place and nothing is in the way for you to fall. Exercise, the dirty word, the thing that nobody likes to do. Exercise as you're an older adult is taking a walk every day, is doing something like yoga or a chair exercise class or some of those classes that are out there for balance at the senior centers and things like that. A routine of being active. It doesn't mean that you have to become Jack LaLanne, but you have to have a routine of being active. Lessening your activity and becoming sedentary is um, a recipe for trouble. So just try to stay safely as active as possible. Here are some, you know, some more examples of some of the adaptive equipment because it's really about the environment. It's, unfortunately, some of these things do cost money and they are out of pocket expenses. They're not insurance reimbursable but they are the, the way to stay safe in the house. And the equipment nowadays is a lot more fashionable. You can get really fashionable grab bars and handheld showers and sink faucets and all kinds of things that don't make your house look like it's an institution and don't change the resale value if those are things that you're concerned about. Toilet seats. Very easy, and they're easy to take off. If you have two bathrooms and you want one that you know has the equipment and then one for company, you don't have to have the equipment in all your bathrooms, or you can quickly take one off the, that toilet seat off the guest bathroom when people are coming over. The tub chairs uh, are the safest way to bathe. And then this bottom picture here, I've, over the years, I've started to see people get these cutouts so this was actually a bathtub um, and there's a couple of companies out there that will come and cut the bathtub wall and make it into a walk-in bathroom bathtub for you. Handheld showers to prevent unnecessary standing and reaching. The bed loops are really helpful for people just for leverage. They're not there to prevent falls, falling out of bed. They're there for leverage. Um, and then there's also a tension rod that you can get. And I've seen these in people's bathrooms, people's bedrooms, and people's hallways. This is a tension rod that just uh, adheres to the ceiling and the floor. So these things are non-costly ways to renovate your house a little bit. Of course, the night lights always, always, always have light where from room to room and along the pathways from room to room. If you have stairs in your house, you can get a stair later. Um, sit if you have balance issues or fatigue issues. And for reaching, the reacher is really the best solution. But if you have to stand on something, make sure that you're standing on something with four feet, very sturdy, and it has a handle. Don't stand on anything that will tip over and doesn't have a handle, like a chair, Lauren. We talked about the shower head and the reacher, but the life alert is also so, so helpful. If you don't have a life alert, take your cell phone with you everywhere you go. And nowadays, the smartphones, a lot of people, uh, smartwatches, they have uh, direct links to the 911. They have ways that you can connect your smartphone to family member, your smartwatch to family members so they could know if you have fallen or if, the, if you're in need of help. So there's a lot of new technology out there that will help with falls as well. And these I love, these are little ramps that you can actually buy and place around areas that have steps that you can, a lot of people have them in the uh, threshold in the garage between the garage door and the one that goes to the house, the, the doorway and the kitchen. A lot of people put them outside and now you can get them, they fold, they're easy enough to put in the car and take with you to 
So if you want to go visit somebody. And in conclusion, it's just that falls are generally a public health concern. And right in Arizona, we have the Arizona uh, Falls Prevention Coalition that's always working on things in uh, different ways. There's, it's in the references um, in the PowerPoint, but they are a great resource on how to prevent falls. They've got literature on their website. They have activities and, and local um, awareness days and act, uh, best awareness days that they do at different hospitals in different areas around the country, uh, around Arizona. They have physical and occupational therapists that will, will do fall risk assessments with people. So that's the Arizona Coalition on Falls Prevention. And they have a website and they're great. And just be aware of the risks. Watch your health, watch your health, your lifestyle, watch your environment. Be proactive in prevention. And these things will promote confidence. They'll promote independence. They'll promote safety in your lifestyle and your quality of life. And that concludes everything. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Is there any, but anything else that anybody would like to comment or share? So, Leslie, you have a question in the chat. You showed the tension bar that went floor to ceiling next to that bed. Yes. This is a question that somebody said, do they have something like that for the pool? For the pool? Yeah. I don't think so, because it, you know, it's a tension rod. So, so have you seen I need a sky hook. This? In the sky hook. <laughs> any assists for the pool itself? There are assists for the pool. I didn't include them in, in this video, but in this discussion, but there are hydro lifts that you can get to help you lift uh, Hoyer type hydro lifts to get in and out of the pool. And there are railings that can be installed in, and ramps. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I didn't catch that it was a tension pole. So oh. <laughs> yeah, but you could actually they have half poles that you can get and some of them have uh, swing out arms and some of them are just regular just like a half pole that can be installed. So they're just very weighted or they're actually anchored? They're anchored. They're anchored. Yeah. Uh, any other questions for Leslie? This is a very informative. Um, Izzy has a question. Go for Leslie. Izzy. Yes, Izzy. Yeah. Uh, in your discussion, you mentioned traumatic brain injury. Yeah. So of course, we live with traumatic brain injury because of our son and his research. Right. Uh, what, one of the things that I wanted to point out, that if you do fall and you do hit your head, please consult with a doctor because you could have a concussion or a brain injury that you don't know of. Absolutely. And there that's the solutions. thing. Yeah. And like your son highlighted um, in the discussion last week, and I thought I might have said it today too, but if I didn't, I'd like to highlight that it, it's important to tell the doctor, like, not only did you hurt your wrist, you also might have bumped your head. And it's really important not to leave that out because the head injury is not visible. So you don't always see that you've hurt yourself or, and the after effect of the head injury comes later. So sometimes you don't realize it, you know, you say, oh, I just hurt my shoulder or you hurt your wrist. And then you go home and that night you have a headache and you're throwing up. And um, so those head injury effects are, they're not visible and they hit you later. So it's important to tell the doctor. Thank you, Izzy. Any other uh, questions? All right, so I'm gonna just officially thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much for your time, your presence. It was my pleasure. Thank you everybody for joining. It was so much fun to see all those familiar faces. Thank you. Presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Yes, very Super. good. Thank you.